Hey guys, it's me again. Um, I know we ain't done a video in a couple days. It's been raining here constantly. Like the last four days, I can barely keep one miner running with the rain. But I've kept one one girl running. She's been doing good. You can tell which one it is. I got. I finally got my manifold system put in and everything. Um, this is supposed to be red. It looks more orange to me. But, you know, hey, this is what it is. Blue is the cold side. Red's a, or slash orange is the hot side. And yes, I know, I got a couple of clear ones. That's because I ran out of blue. Only had so much. I'll get some more blue. But I went ahead and painted them red and blue. These are for the future miners. The ones that are going on the bottom shelf. And I just put loops in between so I can go ahead and turn them on. And let it move water so I can see if I'm going to be able to put out enough water for all of them or what all I need to do. Um, pretty happy now because it's getting pretty cool at night, but I've got them all inside. And uh, I came across something and I don't know if it's a thing. I don't know if it's going to work every time. It's going to require more poking it with a stick, but what I did and what happened and we'll post a screenshot online so you can see during the video when I first fired this up of course you know I need to test that it's going to put out enough water for the machines and so what I did was I turned off all these and so I had all the water running through just those eight and I knew that way we'd have enough water for sure for those. And then I'll slowly bring these online and monitor the temperature. I took a, just a little old cheap thermometer with a remote sensor and uh, stuck it on the one that I was using to test, which happens to be number two there. No reason, just happened to be number two. Okay, and I taped it on to get the outgoing water temperature so I could see you know what my temperature was because i know what it should be and then i figured i'll start opening these up because these basically just take the place of a miner if this is open and it's flowing water it's the same thing as if it had a miner hooked up to it so these are just test loops and i fired everything up Everything looked good, and I was like, like I said, it's been rainy, but I'm like, we got enough battery power to run one. So I just fired up number two. And I let it come up, get up to speed, and start mining, where it would show up on the pool. And of course, when it shows up on the pool, you'll see in the screenshot, you know, there's only one miner running. These are S21s, hydros. They're rated for 395 terahash a second 395 you'll see in the screenshot it was doing 461 okay consistently I looked back and forth because I was watching it and the temperature and I was concerned you know I wanted to make sure I had enough water and when I pulled up the screenshot I was like holy cow why is it doing 461 and I talked in another video a while back about maybe cooling the water down to get more performance out of it. It's just actually easier to flow more water because my exiting water temperature was about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. All my stuff's gonna be in Fahrenheit because I don't live in Europe and you'll just have to do the conversion if you do. So it was about 78 degrees Fahrenheit coming out and it was 64 going in and I'm like wow at first I thought maybe that's not picking up enough heat because sometimes you can move the water too fast that it won't pick up the heat but then when I looked at the terahash a second it was at 461 and this is with factory ant miner firmware this isn't any Vanish or the New Brains firmware where it was turned up or anything. 
this was factory firmware. It was running a consistent 460 to 440. I looked at it because I was like, holy Batman. And I start going back and forth and I'm giving it 10 minutes and I look at it again and it was consistently running between 440 and 460 terahash a second on a 395 machine. Of course, then my brain starts clicking. I'm like, wow, all I got to do is buy another $100 pump and shove twice as much water through these things. And now I say twice as much. I don't know how much water was going through it. The pump is rated for 50 gallons a minute. And with an inch and a half line, and I ran an inch and a half line. And if you figure in the lift, there's about eight and a half feet of lift. It comes out to like 43 gallons a minute. And I only had eight of the valves open, so I was running 43 gallons a minute through eight machines. So I'm going to say I was at roughly twice what normally goes through these things. I think the specifications call for two and a half gallons a minute. And it was probably running five, maybe six gallons a minute. So it was moving a lot more cooling through it than normal. But I sat here and watched it. The thing was consistently averaging about 441 terahash a second. Not turned up, nothing in the soft firmware that I made any modifications. It's just stock amp miner. Now, put the aftermarket firmware where you could adjust it. I really don't even know if there's a ceiling on that that you could find. I'm sure there is. At some point, it's going to run out of power supply. But the power supply was still pulling 7.99 amps. Just say 8 amps on 3 phase 415. Or 2 kilowatts, give or take. And that's where it normally runs. I The first thing I did was flip over to the power consumption and say, man, if we got off the chart on power, and I was like, nah, it's pulling normal power. Why is it running so high of a hash rate? Now, maybe it was a fluke. I don't know. We're trying to do science and science is demonstrable and repeatable. So I'm gonna, after we get everything sorted, I'm gonna try to run some experiments and see if I can repeat it on a, another miner you know i fired one of them up today because like i said it's been raining and cloudy for seems like forever and i managed to run about three of them for about four hours today and then i tapered down to one so i couldn't really get a good read i'd rather make bitcoin than do science and but at the end of the day when i tapered down to the one i went ahead and tapered back down to this one and it was running 419 <laughs> which is a considerable improvement. And if you, I haven't done all the math to figure out the joules per terahash or watts per terahash and all that, but I did quickly do the math and that's about a 16, 15, 16, 17% increase in hash rate. And if you start recalculating all your numbers with that, that makes a big difference on how much money you're going to make each month. Now, I don't know. I haven't looked at the charts. Maybe the algorithm just went super easy today or something. I don't know. Or yesterday. I'll have to dig into this and figure out exactly what is going on and what's happening. But I can say you don't need to make the water cold or just shove more of it through there. And if you do that, your hash rate goes up. I did notice the other day when I was running seven of them that when I used the big pump, the hash rate on every one of those 395 machines was over 400 consistently all day. So I don't know if, uh, I think it's just a water flow issue. And of course, when you look on brains on their mining pool, they're notoriously low on the hash rate. Like if I look on there 
and it says I'm doing 3.1 petahash. If I look in Vanish, it'll show me doing like 3.4. So they're always on the conservative side, and that was their, their reading was 461 on the conservative side. So I don't know, maybe with some different firmware and some tweaking, because remember my output temperature was 70, 78 and change. Um, and I think you can run it up to about 130, 140 Fahrenheit. And it's still within its operational parameters, if I remember correctly. So if I could have overclocked it, I could have probably got that thing up to 500. And if you can pick up a 15 to 20% increase on your hash rate, just by running more water, well, that's kind of a game changer when you start adding machine after machine after machine. I mean, you could be talking about 30, 40, 50 dollars a day difference on that. So I think this is a pretty big deal. And I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it's just that machine and that's the only one that does it. Or maybe there was some kind of the difficulty just bottomed out yesterday on Bitcoin and it was super easy to mine. I don't know. I don't think it did, but I'm going to go in tonight and try to look all that stuff up and get more details on it. And I'll do a follow up video after I've had a chance to test a couple of these. But I just wanted to do a quick little video. I know. A lot of people said they want to see more about the mining and uh but everything is working good now i got rid of my extra cables coming out of the breaker boxes everything's in from outside since it's getting cooler so hopefully nothing will freeze everything will be good and uh once i get a little more data on this i'll do a follow-up video but uh man it looks promising really does so that's it you guys have a good evening